Hello and welcome to seven days of shark science. Uh, coming up this week, sharks, 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 and also some things that aren't sharks. Starting off the news this week, footage of the highest great white shark jump out of the water has been shown on the Discovery Channel to celebrate the ongoing tradition of Shark Week. While a lot of people are fascinated about this record and would like to congratulate the shark, the great white shark that achieved this astonishing feat likely doesn't really care. It's probably just quite annoyed that all the energy it spent leaping out of the water was wasted as the seal it grabbed onto was fake. In other news, Shark Week has officially begun on the Benji Thomas channel this week, starting off last Sunday. The incredibly factually accurate and important YouTube channel sports a variety of incredibly intelligent and highly attractive news presenters. And that's about the only other mildly interesting thing I could find that's happened to sharks this week. Bit of a dry spell, unfortunately. Looking to the stars now, Ceres, a dwarf planet that resides in the asteroid belt of our solar system, has been found to be an ocean world, at least under its surface. This is an incredibly exciting discovery and will mean that astronomers around the world will now cast half an eye towards this once unloved dwarf, as that age-old question starts to pique our interest once again. Sharks. There you go, there could be space sharks living on Ceres. Shark Week. Also in the less shark-related news this week is a very significant paper that's been published which has produced an updated evolutionary hypothesis of early birds and their relatives. This new work supports the idea that Deinonychosauria, which contains Trudontids and Dromaeosaurs, is the sister taxon to the birds Paravis. They also found that Anchionithene is the earliest diverging bird lineage. The researchers caution that this phylogeny will likely continue to develop, but with these new results, they were able to estimate the potential for powered flight among these animals, finding that a broad range of bird ancestors actually neared the threshold for powered flight, suggesting that there was more experimentation with this type of locomotion in these dinosaurs than had been previously appreciated, but only a few actually crossed this threshold. Next is some very intriguing research which has discovered that the bizarre Triassic reptile, Tanistrophius longobardicus, is actually represented by two different species, not one. Both large and small specimens of these reptiles have been found, but previously they were thought to be juveniles and adults. However, this new paper used high-resolution synchrotron radiation microtomography as well as limb bone paleohistology to reveal that the small specimens are actually skeletally mature, meaning that there was a small and large species coexisting at the same time and place. The larger species have been named Tanistrophius hydroides, and the paleontologists also provide evidence that this species lived mostly in the water instead of on land, as has been proposed in the past. And now over to Ben with some actual and rather exciting shark news. Ben? 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 Right, well, I guess that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I hope you enjoyed Seven Days of Shark Science and um, see you tomorrow.